Hey guys, thanks for uh, taking the time out to join us for our uh, session today on uh, our uh, Bluemix private cloud with uh, Red Hat solution. I know you guys are nice and energized after your lunch, so let's, let's keep that energy going in the session. Uh, we're going to use this time to talk about, uh, like I said, our new offering, a uh, joint offering between uh, IBM and Red Hat, a uh, managed OpenStack service uh, powered by our Red Hat OpenStack platform. So take you through the agenda really quickly, um, and as we go through, we have a couple of presenters, and we'll let them do introductions as they come up to, uh, to speak. Uh, first, we're going to have um, our IBM counterparts give an overview on uh, IBM Bluemix private cloud uh, solution in general. Uh, which will bleed into overview of our new joint solution, uh, IBM Private Cloud, uh, with Red Hat. Uh, so that is, uh, as I said earlier, a managed OpenStack platform uh, powered by uh, Red Hat's OpenStack. Uh, then we'll kind of have a look at the architecture of solutions, see what's going on under the covers, uh, how it's similar to maybe uh, what some of you guys are running in your own data centers, how that can bridge the gap between uh, a managed service and a private cloud service. Uh, then I'll take, uh, take the reins over and we'll look at some of the uh, open source enterprise solutions that we see our customers running on uh, Red Hat OpenStack, whether that be managed or unmanaged in, in a private data center. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some work that's going on on the uh, Bluemix private cloud uh, solution uh, in, in some of the kind of internal IBM teams to see how uh, OpenStack is being utilized by some of our IBM counterparts. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hand the mic over to Andre and let him introduce himself and to give an overview on the uh, IBM solution. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andre Bearfield. Uh, I am the senior product owner uh, of IBM Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat uh, at IBM. So I'm going to briefly talk about uh, the offering Bluemix Private Cloud, generally uh, jump into some details about uh, the Red Hat offering, um, a really high level overview at the, of the architecture before we really talk about the thing that I think is the most important piece, which is what do you do after you have this cloud deployed? Uh, pardon me on these first couple slides, they're a little bit word heavy, uh, but I just want to get some definitions out of the way uh, before we uh, jump into some of the other details. So private cloud is a type of cloud computing that delivers similar advantages to public cloud that includes scalability and self-service. But unlike public clouds, a private cloud is, a, is dedicated to a single organization and provides a greater degree of control, pre predictability, and security. So IBM Bluemix private cloud actually extends on a private cloud mo model offering private cloud as a service. With private cloud as a service, customers completely avoid the burden of buying hardware, of building cloud operations expertise, uh, of selecting a cloud technology, of managing cloud technology lifecycle. Uh, we think that this creates the simplest manner for customers who need privacy, who need that predictability, um, but want to maintain scalability to get into private cloud uh, because customers aren't responsible for the capex uh, in many cases. Customers aren't, don't have to figure out what the platform is. Customers uh, don't have to understand the underpinnings of OpenStack in order to consume it. Okay, so this slide is intended to compare uh, on the left public cloud on the right, private cloud, and then in the center where IBM Bluemix private cloud uh, believes uh, key value is. So I'm just going to walk through this pretty quickly here. So everybody knows public cloud is on-demand consumption of compute storage resources. It's fast, it's elastic, it's consumption-based billing. Uh, there's no hardware management involved there. Um, it's awesome. But some cus customers experience a regular performance because you're sharing machines with other Folks, you have no idea who they are. Um, there's vendor lock-in there. Um, there's also, many customers have security concerns about who else is using their machines, uh, where their data is, uh, where the data is actually, um, what data centers they might be in. So the private cloud is intended to solve that problem. So private cloud offers predictable performance. You know exactly who's using 
the machines. Uh, you know, it's only your folks, it's only your technology, it's only your team using the devices. You have cost control because you bought the hardware and there's no, uh, you don't have to wonder what the bill will be at the end of the month because you've invested, you've built this thing yourself. You know exactly what's gonna happen with your bill at the end of the month. Security control is all in the space that you own. It's your data center, it's your network engineer, it's your team. Integrate into existing IT. You have your data center, you have your existing database technology. Um, so you feel secure, you know the space. But it's challenging to scale private cloud, right? You have to, every time you run out of space, you have to buy more machines. You have to figure out how to extend the cloud technology onto new machines. Um, you have to manage the life cycle of the cloud on your own. You have to figure out how to get from Newton to Pike. It's capital intensive. You have to buy all the machines. You pay out of pocket, sometimes millions of dollars to get the machines installed. You have to build a staff who has understanding and expertise in the area. Uh, and obviously, managing hardware. So these, there's a bunch of benefits here, but there's a bunch of challenges here. So we think that with private cloud as a service, you gain speed of public, it's very elastic. It's not purely consumption-based billing, it's monthly billing, which is still uh, more predictable, I think, or less capital intensive, at least, than building your own in your own data center. It's dedicated infrastructure, so you gain the predictability of the performance. Um, it's monthly billing based on node count, so it won't jump, the, the cost at the end of the month is one that you can predict. Dedicated machines, without you being responsible for the maintenance of the hardware, their security controls, predictable performance. I think this is the best of both worlds for those who require the security, who want it to be predictable, who want to understand what the bill is going to be at the end of the month, but don't want to build expertise because we manage all the way up into the hypervisor, all the hardware, all the OpenStack software. We deliver to the customer APIs in a dashboard so they can consume private cloud like public cloud. Introducing IBM Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat. So March the 31st, uh, this year, we released the Red Hat option, which supplants the existing community-based uh, release with Red Hat. So this option, as you can see here, oh, let me jump back for a second. So IBM Bluemix Private Cloud generally is available in two models. So there's the dedicated model, which means hosted. So that's in IBM Global Data Center. And there's also a local model, which means on-premises in a customer's data center. IBM Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat is currently only available in the dedicated model, which means it is available in IBM Cloud data centers in more than 25 data centers around the world. Customers in this scenario, since it's hosted, do not pay for any of the hardware. It's purely consumption on a monthly basis. Totally dedicated to the customer, now with Red Hat OpenStack platform powering the cloud. So IBM Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat is certified and managed deployment of Red Hat. And we think that this is powerful because it enables us to remove some of the critical key pieces that challenge customers from running a private cloud, enabling them to have that privacy that they deserve and need. So why Red Hat? We continued, we've continued to find that customers with existing relationship with Red Hat want enterprise support for their enterprise workloads running on Red Hat. And in order for us to support that customer need, we needed to extend our platform options. Red Hat has a significant enterprise Linux market share. I think that number is 65% of the Linux market. And so that means 65%, there's a potential that 65% of the Linux market share, every one of those customers might want to get into cloud. Some subset of them want to get into private cloud. And we want to make sure that those who don't want to own all the infrastructure and don't want to own the expertise in OpenStack still have an opportunity to have that privacy 
um, in their clouds. Red Hat also has a robust partner ecosystem and supports enterprise applications. Joe's going to talk a little bit more about those enterprise applications next. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are, there's both a dedicated and local model of Bluemix private cloud, um, which is hosted and on-premises, respectively. Um, and IBM Bluemix Cloud with Red Hat is currently only available in the hosted model, although we are working on uh, implementing uh, the local model on-premises in the next quarter. So a few technical highlights here. Um, I'm going to just brush through them really quickly. So OpenStack release, it's on Red Hat OSP 10, which is Newton. Um, APIs and Horizon Console are available, configured in HA. Um, several networking features, uh, scale-out compute, scale-out block storage based on Red Hat Ceph, uh, and object storage options based on OpenStack Swift. Um, customers can bring their own images. Customers can bring their own licenses to the cloud. Uh, there's an option to bring your own IP in case you want to use private IP address range for your VMs. SoftLayer or IBM Cloud Data Centers uh, offer a direct link and private network in case you want your VMs to talk to uh, infrastructure in your own data center. And this is naturally backed by 24 by 7 IBM Global Support uh, for the hardware to the OpenStack software up through the hypervisor. I mentioned that there are IBM Cloud, this is available in IBM Clouds around the world. There are more than 25 IBM Cloud data centers available. Um, this is here for your reference. Okay, I think I'm running out of time. So I'm going to very quickly talk about the architecture um, at a very high level here. Um, as IBM Private Cloud with Red Hat is only available and dedicated, we're just going to talk about the dedicated model. So each to get started, what we're trying to do here is provide customers an opportunity to get started at a very small scale. Right? We don't want customers to have to buy into a 100-node cluster to get started with private cloud. And so we've figured out a way to provide a three-node compute cluster as a minimum footprint. But in order to deliver that, there's a couple of required features. So each IBM Bluemix private cloud with Red Hat starts with a pair of dedicated firewalls on the front end and then a pair of dedicated OpenStack controllers where the services run in HA, and then a bare minimum of a three-node uh, compute cluster. And there are three different types of the compute node cluster, but I think that's beyond the scope of this discussion to get into that detail. So there's 10 gigabit per second connectivity. Compute nodes can be added on up to 100 compute nodes per cloud. Um, you can add on SSD block storage, which is powered by Red Hat Ceph. You can add on object storage, which is powered by OpenStack Swift. So this is a, a different view of, the, of uh, how the cloud can scale out. It only actually takes a look at the compute perspective. There's uh, no concept of storage here. But very quickly, you see the controller nodes on the left side of the screen. So there's HA proxy on the front end that VIP is managed by UCARP to ensure if there's an issue with one of the controller nodes that the IP on the front end is switched over to the other node. Um, the OpenStack services that are supported are running on both of those nodes, RabbitMQ, MySQL, and Cinder also running there. So the minimum three node compute nodes and minimum three nodes of compute can be scaled out to 100 nodes per stack. The services that are supported are Keystone, Nova, Cinder, Neutron plus Elbas, Glance, Heat, Solometer, Swift, and Horizon. Um, versions are available there for your reference. And the technology that we use uh, to support the controller nodes is also listed here for your reference. OpenStack database is MySQL and Percona. MongoDB for Solometer, Ursula, which is our deployment technology that's home, uh, homegrown. Um, it's also available publicly on GitHub in case you want to check it out. It's Ansible-based configuration technology. Networking, Linux Bridge, uh, Neutron, and VXLAN. As mentioned, 
Object storage is managed by OpenStack Swift. Block storage is managed by Red Hat Ceph. Uh, the hypervisor is KVM from RHEL. And the network security is via the firewall with VPN. If you, VPN is optional, bring your own IP is optional as well. Uh, this is another view of what I've described here. So it talks about the controller nodes and how things are connected, but this is primarily here for your reference. I think it's uh, also beyond the scope of this uh, discussion. Um, I think what we want to do here is focus on, now that you have this private cloud that you consume like public cloud, what cool things can you do on top of the VMs? So I think at this point we're going to pivot towards a discussion about Red Hat technologies that add value to Bluemix private cloud. Thanks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Andre. Uh, my name is Joe Mann. I'm a senior solution architect that covers the uh, certified cloud and service provider program at Red Hat. So I've worked with Andre and his peers a lot over the last couple months on this solution. Uh, and I think the first thing I want to talk about before we get into the rest of the slides is that we've been hearing from uh, especially our joint customers uh, that have been running rail workloads and looking for kind of landing spaces for those that this idea of a certified hypervisor in a, in a certified environment to run their rail workloads and then the extended uh, technology on top of that is very important. So what we're going to talk about a lot in the next couple slides is really our emerging technology portfolio, including OpenShift, uh, Container Platform, uh, Ansible, Ansible Tower, Cloud Forms. But really at the basis of all this, um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it, is the need and the desire to have a supported platform for those rail workloads to run. So that was a big motivation um, for, for both sides of the audience, uh, or both sides of the table to work on this solution. So uh, like I just mentioned, uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about here is our emerging technology portfolio. And, and Red Hat focuses as much on solving, um, using our technology to solve technical problems and technical issues as, as helping our, our customers and partners solve kind of process issues as well. So, uh, you know, this is a, I really love this slide. It kind of describes different kind of uh, um, iterations of, of, the, of the growth our technology has seen uh, in general over the last couple of years. Uh, from the development process, from the waterfall and agile styles to the DevOps mentality, which is a big part of what uh, OpenShift Container Platform helps enable, as well as the idea of breaking up these monolithic and inter applications into to microservices. So having these microservices combined to, to provide the uh, service that once a monolithic application uh, previously provided. Also, we see on the right side, on the infrastructure side, uh, kind of this movement from physical servers to virtualizations now to even containers. So uh, from physical servers to virtualization, I think a lot of the enterprises out there have, have squeezed the blood out of that turnip. So they have finally kind of virtualized their environments, and now they're looking for that next level uh, um, of, of containerization, so to speak, to get a little bit more juice out of the, uh, out of the compute power that they have. And then lastly, pertinent to this conversation, particularly a lot of our customers and partners are moving out of the data center business. They don't want to run these workloads and manage and pay for the power and pipe in their own data centers. So managed and hosted solutions are becoming more and more popular with the move to, move, move to the cloud. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, this, this DevOps mentality, microservices, uh, container orchestration, uh, changing how, the way our customers develop their applications. OpenShift is our um, container, our enterprise container platform uh, that utilizes Kubernetes as a scheduler uh, and, and leverages Docker image uh, container format to, to deploy these microservices. So um, as you can see, uh, OpenShift itself is really uh, a tool to kind of separate the development team and the infrastructure team and solve those problems separately. So in conjunction with a managed infrastructure service like a, a Bluemix private cloud with Red Hat, it kind of takes the infrastructure headache out uh, of, the, of the customer's hands so they can sheerly focus on these large development environments. So what this looks like in practice is a, a large OpenStack deployment with OpenShift and OpenShift nodes deployed on top of that. So you can massively scale these development environments 
and even scale up and scale down as the, as the developer need uh, increases. So the developers themselves have the ability to uh, access the OpenShift environment in a self-service manner. Uh, there are multiple languages and containers that are shipped in our registry to allow them to build uh, the applications that um, they need to in their environment. It also allows them to automate and scale these workloads as the demand increases and decreases. Uh, obviously, it's open source and enterprise grade, so it kind of stands up to the test of, of security as well as uh, open standards that Red Hat finds very important. Um, so it's built for both traditional and cloud native applications. Uh, the source to image uh, functionality we see a lot of our customers using to take some of the more monolithic old school applications to try to kind of put them into the, uh, the microservices mentality, break them apart and put them back together to make them a little more resilient. Um, and it's obviously great for net new applications that kind of embody that microservices workflow. Um, it's truly integrated with our hybrid cloud story. Uh, this, this, this platform runs wherever Red Hat Enterprise Linux runs. So if you have customers or partners that are running OpenShift in their private uh, cloud data center, in public clouds, um, deploying this, this uh, platform in uh, Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat, the, the functionality is exactly the same. The developers interact with OpenShift the same way they would no matter what the underlying infrastructure is. So at Red Hat, you'll hear us talk about this hybrid cloud mentality a lot, and we want to extend the flexibility and functionality of our products no matter what the underlying infrastructure is. So that's a big part of, of, of Red Hat's story. Um, this is just a little quick diagram of the solution. So let's see if I have my little laser here. So um, there are really two kinds of servers in the OpenShift deployment. We have our, no our uh, nodes here, which are actually housing these pods, which are essentially uh, containers, uh, Docker image format containers here. Um, our scheduler over here, the master nodes, essentially take care of all the connections and routings that go on in the nodes. So if we have a pod here, um, that is uh, connected with a service layer to another pod on another node. Uh, Kubernetes in the, in the master here makes sure that all these services are connected and then they serve out uh, a service through this routing layer that end users can access without having to really understand the inner workings of OpenShift. So it's a fairly, um, it's a fairly complex uh, kind of configuration under the hood. But at the end of the day, it allows our developers to easily deploy these applications at scale. Um, and with the master nodes in the environment, we can automatically kind of uh, regenerate these pods. If pod A goes down, that's connected to pod B, spin them up on different nodes, define where the pods are deployed with, uh, with zones and rules, uh, and have a lot of control over our application platform. So, um, as I said earlier, the service layer and down here on the infrastructure layer, we can run anywhere where Red Hat Enterprise Linux runs. So it's very, very flexible application platform. Um, it, can, it, it can integrate with, uh, with Git, existing CI, CD pipeline, um, as well as uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux at the base of this can uh, be integrated easily with the existing um, operations teams tooling, especially if they're RHEL shops already. So that's um, you know, a huge part of the uh, tenability of this solution. Another uh, layer above the uh, OpenShift solution, we've also released our full middleware platform um, at, in our, con our uh, container registry. So uh, JBoss shops can now deploy all of these services, Feed Henry, with a caveat, Feed Henry is coming soon. All of the rest of these services can be called and deployed in OpenShift. Um, uh, with, with doc, Docker pool commands and managed and deployed in pods. So that's huge for our customers that are middle, big middleware shops and JBoss shops already because they can, they can continue to deploy EAP applications, Fuse, uh, AMQ, BPM processes in OpenShift without having to relearn kind of the infrastructure and the technology. Another big part of uh, our workload deployment uh, on OpenStack in general and uh, especially with uh, Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat is, is our Ansible tooling, uh, using Ansible to deploy workloads in OpenStack no matter where that OpenStack lives, so to speak. So uh, I'm sure most of you in the room are familiar with Ansible, but Ansible is an automation language that uh, can perfectly describe an IT organization's environment with kind of simple, human-readable, what we call playbooks. So you don't have to have any kind of special coding expertise to be able to track through an Ansible playbook to understand what that playbook is responsible for. So it's a really accessible automation language. Um, we acquired Ansible, it's been about two years now. So 
Ansible itself is completely open source, available to anyone out there in the world. And then uh, Ansible Tower is our uh, enterprise um, kind of man Ansible management uh, web UI tool that we offer. So um, Tower provides role-based access control for your organization to allow certain users access to certain playbooks to deploy applications that they should be able to without having them meddle with infrastructure that maybe they shouldn't have access to. So this uh, Ansible and Ansible Tower solution, I think, is going to play a big part in helping our customers deploy workloads in Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat that they previously have deployed in their own private data center. So the playbooks don't really change much except for the infrastructure piece. So you now direct the Ansible playbook to deploy this same solution in Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat with a very, very minimal re-architecture of, of the playbook itself. So that's going to be a big part of kind of what we could, you know, migrating workloads in this, in this hybrid cloud model between different providers and different environments. So what's coming up uh, down the pipe for the Red Hat, uh, our IBM uh, Bluemix private cloud with Red Hat solution? So uh, the first, one of the first couple things we want to look at is integrating cloud forms uh, with the solution. Uh, obviously, it's OpenStack, Red Hat OpenStack platform under the hood, so the technology work is not going to be uh, yeah, uh, uh, much heavy lifting. We just, it's just a process. So we want our customers that are using cloud forms to manage their current on-prem private cloud to be able to have visibility into the Bluemix private cloud as well. So that's on the roadmap. Uh, we're also working with SAP to certify RHEL for SAP HANA on the Bluemix private cloud platform, so we'll have that. Uh, we hope to have that so our customers, joint customers, can deploy SAP workloads. Um, obviously, we're, we have, they, IBM has a strategy for rolling upgrades of the environment, so as new versions of OpenStack, uh, Red Hat OpenStack are released, customers can enjoy in-place upgrades to take advantage of new features. Uh, and finally, as Andre alluded to earlier in his presentation, um, um, Bluemix Private Cloud with Red Hat uh, the local offering. So this same solution in customers' data centers as opposed to in uh, IBM Bluemix data centers. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand, uh, hand the mic over to Paul, who's going to talk a little bit about what they're doing at IBM with, uh, with Bluemix Private Cloud. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Tchaikovsky. I am the technical lead for this uh, current release. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things we actually run on top of OpenStack ourselves, uh, and also uh, talking about like, the composability that it uh, brings to the table, uh, and also how uh, by uh, utilizing uh, OpenStack inside of software data center, we also get a lot of uh, interesting hybrid capabilities. Uh, so we, we offer OpenStack in our data center or in yours, uh, and if, it, if it's in ours, even if it's in yours, we, we get access to all of the uh, all of the tools and features we have inside of SoftLayer and all of the Bluemix services. So as well as running OpenStack VMs, you get access to like the Bluemix container service, you get access to running physical machines in SoftLayer and whatnot, and they can uh, talk to each other fairly easily because they can be in the same data center. Uh, and we, we do that at, uh, at Bluebox. Um, uh, so we basically, uh, on, com on composable infrastructure, I like to think of it in two steps. Uh, we have what we define the infrastructure uh, as, and we, we're usually using OpenStack Heat for that. Uh, but we also use the, the soft layer APIs to get uh, machines out of soft layer. Uh, and then we use Vagrant uh, and, and, and other tools to do like dev environments and stuff. Uh, and we combine that with Ansible, uh, which does all of our uh, application uh, installation and configuration. Uh, and that separation of uh, duties works really well for, an, for a number of reasons. Uh, which we haven't got a lot of time to go, to go through, but if this stuff I'm talking about interests you, uh, hit me up and we can talk about any of this stuff uh, in depth. Uh, so uh, with Ansible, we have, like, uh, we have this uh, monolithic repo uh, for what we call Site Controller, which is like the operations platform that runs uh, all of our uh, OpenStack clouds and some of the other uh, uh, software that we support at Bluebox. And you can see there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, we have around 25,000 lines in our playbooks, uh, plus templates and everything else. So it's, it's, there's a lot going on. Uh, we do a lot of access and security stuff, Bastion with uh, uh, two-factor auth. We have the Elk stack for logging. We have monitoring. We have a lot of miscellaneous stuff, Jenkins. We have a bunch of stuff for doing uh, compliance, uh, as well as a bunch of stuff for mirroring uh, uh, YUM repos and uh, 
uh, PyPy and stuff like that so that we don't have to reach out to the internet and we can make sure that the version that we're asking for is the version we get and we don't get uh, messed up by someone updating something in PyPy or whatever. Uh, and it, uh, it's composable, so using the Ansible inventories, we can really uh, describe uh, what we're going to put where. Uh, this is kind of uh, the site controller portion of, uh, of it, so let me actually go back here. So with, with the composability of this allows us to say, hey, let's, uh, let's do some CI, let's spin up a you know, Jenkins server and a Bastion over here and run all of uh, our OpenStack tests uh, through this, or run of all our site controller tests through this. Um, this is site controller itself, and so you can see we have we have two of we have two central site controllers, and they're all connected to every data center. We have a blue box cloud, uh, and each of those has uh, it's got like yeah, Elk and Sensu and whatnot for uh, for that. And so this is all basically composed together with a combination of uh, heat and uh, and the soft layer uh, uh, APIs. And then when we're running it in your data center, we have a bunch of uh, Pixie stuff that uh, operates similar to, say, Cobbler, and that sort of does our uh, infrastructure uh, for, the, the, for the infrastructure itself. And then we have Ansible to then deploy based on our inventories and the roles and whatever to, uh, to get our application stood up. And so we can go from having no, no infrastructure in, the, in one of our soft layer data centers to having a uh, site controller hooked back to our central with mirror access and all of that, and then get OpenStack installed uh, within a very short amount of time, I think a, a couple of hours from, from nothing to complete if there aren't any hiccups along the way. Uh, just from the power of kind of taking that two-step uh, uh, method for doing our uh, automation. And that was, that was all I'm going to talk about because I want to leave plenty of time for Q&A. All right, so I wanted to go over this slide really quickly before we take a couple of, of, of questions. And uh, also really quickly, I think, um, I don't know if any of us mentioned this, but I think one of the huge takeaways for this and, and generally for our customers and partners is that, um, and you know, Andre talked about this a little bit, but we feel that this is a great way uh, for our customers who maybe don't have the expertise or the workforce um, to deploy, manage, and run their Red Hat OpenStack environment to be able to, um, you know, kind of dip their toe in, explore OpenStack uh, as a solution or a fit for their uh, for their IT landscape, um, with kind of a minimum investment for that for that starting footprint. So, you know, uh, the consumption, the monthly consumption model is is all the rage today, and we know that. So we're trying. Um, to make the solution uh, as accessible as possible to our customers, especially those that maybe are out of the business of maintaining their own internal infrastructure, but still want and need uh, the, the technology that, uh, that OpenStack provides. So, you know, next steps, uh, for those of you that have connections into IBM or Red Hat, if this interests you, reach out to your respective account teams to start that conversation. Um, you can also reach out to myself and Andre, uh, and as well as Asmir Mohammed, who uh, is, is uh, doing another session on, on the solution on the IBM sponsored track that you'll see at the bottom. Uh, that's tomorrow at 3:40 and 2:08. So um, that they're going to talk uh, with uh, a lot um, with the, uh, the the first customer on the solution, CloudSoft. So. Um, uh, uh, the contact from CloudSoft is going to talk about how they're using the solution. So if you're interested in seeing kind of what's happening in the real world today with the solution as it, as it exists, that's going to be a great session. Uh, we also have a couple press releases and blogs on the solution um, that just do a good job of setting the landscape and a little, a little bit about what the solution does and what it is. So um, if we have any questions, we, we have probably about five minutes left, I believe. So if there are any questions about the solution, uh, you know, feel free to, to speak up. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass this over to Andre to talk a little bit more about the hardware options. Uh, so, um, there, so the answer is no, I guess. Um, so this, the options that are available are those that are available. Because they're managed by us, the best way for us to effectively manage hardware is to keep a very narrow set of hardware that is, is well known to us, right?
Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, we didn't really touch on that. Uh, the question, for those that didn't hear it, is where does IBM's management stop and where does the customer or the partner that is deploying on top of that start? So IBM essentially manages the OpenStack uh, solution, the compute, the controller, up to the hypervisor level. The customer and, or partner brings their own images, brings their own solutions and own images that are install, installed on those images, and they are responsible for the deployment and whatever happens above the hypervisor layer. So this is, I think, a, a, a big value prop for a lot of our customers that don't really want to become OpenStack specialists, they can simply get access to the APIs of the infrastructure and build their solution on top of that, if that makes sense. Yep. And is this, um, you mentioned it's a monthly bill, so is there any new service there, or is it just for now, right now, it's monthly bill? Is that one more normal thing on target? Precisely. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I think uh, Bob is finished, I think. Is there a question that needs to be closed? Okay. No, because it's it's node based, right? So um, it, we can scale fast within. We can add nodes within 24 hours. And actually, the solution can be uh, upon signing a, an agreement, uh, we can deliver this within 72 hours, right? We can add nodes within 24 hours, but there's no burst capability because we'd have to have hardware on. Like already in the stack. And, and for those of you in the room that have ever deployed uh, a production OpenStack environment before, 72 hours is like unbelievable. So that's a huge, huge, huge value prop for the solution as well. Anything else? Well, um, again, thank you everyone for, for coming. Um, let our contact information is up there if you, if you want to reach out to us after the fact, and we'll be hanging around here for the next 10 minutes if you have any other questions. Thanks again, guys. Thanks.